Good day, viewers. Welcome to another AgChem Live. Your presenter for today is Jonai Johnson, Product Development Agronomist for the Southeast Region. And today, the topic of focus is sweet corn. And with, with this crop being so popular on social media, it's fitting for AgChem to take on, take it through how to produce this crop. So if you're a first-time grower or experienced grower, this production guide will help you to get the best out of your yields. So we're just going to delve into several topics of focus today. And the first off, why, why would you plant sweet corn, right? So I'm going to focus along with plant structure, seed selection, your land preparation, uh, seed and soil treatment, planting density, crop nutrition, which is very important, pests and disease, which plays a crucial part in the amount of yield, and also application of pesticides, the new variety, bright gene number two, and or finally, cost benefit analysis. So let us take it through the presentation. So why would you plant seed corn? First of all, the local demand has increased dramatically. With basically production volumes has increased, I'd say about tenfold. There's no actual data currently, but the normal Jamaican has changed their path from the hard field corn to a more milder corn. So that's why sweet corn production has increased greatly. And also the short maturity time. So this crop matures generally within 10 weeks, nine to 10 weeks, while the average field corn will mature in about 12 to 13 weeks. Another, another important point is, is the fresh market, the increase in fresh and available markets. So we're talking about our supermarket, uh, local market, restaurant, and also your roadside vendors. So your jerk, your jerk van, and also your pop-up shops. So those, those markets of suppliers increase greatly. And finally, the return on investment, which is very great. Most crops won't yield the investment that sweet corn will. And return on investment, basically you're getting an average of a thousand to one thousand eight hundred per dozen, which is very great for this crop. All right, so let us basically give you an understanding of the plant. And firstly, before we go into, we want to clarify some misconceptions or basically let you understand uh, the setup of the plant. So first, I'll focus on the structure. On top, you have your tassel, right? So those little here, you see growing onto the corn, which usually first emerges, which a lot of farmers are very grateful to see, is called a tassel. And those have your male portion of your plant. And this is usually called the anther, right? So that anther would contain the pollen that will pollinate your female portion. The next important area is, your, is the ear, right? The corn ear. And that is usually surrounded by a leafy husk. So that that cob, or as I say, corn ear, surrounded by a leafy husk. And generally, that would push out some silks. And those silks would trap a lot of the pollens that fall from the anther. So you have pollination of your corn ear, right? And next important part is the leaf sheet, right? That's basically the stem ear of a plant. And in another important era is the brace or prop roots. So those are the supporting roots that you see emerging from the sides of the corn. And you have your basic root system underground. So that is a, a quick overview. Oh, and to mention though, each seed would be considered a kernel, All right? So if you hear me going through some of these terms, that, that will give you a basic understanding. All right, so first of all, in selecting your seed, what the things you would consider? All right, first one, the variety being highly tolerant to fungal or viral disease. And this is important when cultivating a crop in a high pest era, you want to ensure that the crop doesn't suffer greatly from any fungal or viral attacks, right? Secondly, the environmental condition. That is very key. With Jamaica being a tropical era, you have to ensure that that variety can withstand the temperatures that we experience locally. All right. Thirdly, all right, the time of the year. So although the variety is able to uh, withstand the temperature 
the time of the year is very crucial. So if we're in the wet season, the dry season, we're in fall or spring, you have to check on that from the seed supplier, which condition or which, what time of the year it is suitable to be grown. All right, the next, our next criteria is the number of ears per plant or the number of cobs per plant, which is very great. So that will determine the yield you will get from your field, All right? So if you plant in a half acre, quarter acre, acre, the number of ears per plant is very crucial. That will increase your yield substantially if the number is greater. And the next thing is the, the cob size or ear size at the desired market. So if your market is looking for a medium sized corn, a small corn, a large corn, you have to determine that before you cultivate the corn. All right. Another factor, grain filling. So you want your, your, cob, your cob to be filled completely to the top, which is more appealing to the consumer, and you will be basically able to demand a higher price. So when you have good grain filling, you're getting a good ratio of kernels per cob, which is very good. And, uh, and finally, well, yeah, sugar content, bricks content in the corn. So you have to ensure that the corn as I said, sweet corn provides a sweetness to the consumer. So ensure that the bricks content of the variety you choose is very high. And also, oh, also the shipping and storage potential of the variety. So you want to be able to harvest, store if needed, and if possible, you can ship. So you want to ensure a variety that is basically able to be stored and shipped. All right, since we have covered that, let us go into some of the pre-preparation things you need to deal with. So land preparation is very key. And this, this is basically an important aspect of sweet corn production because sweet corn tend to not uh, do well on lands that have been sitting for a time. So if it's not freshly prepared, you won't get a good production. Or if you had planted about three to four crops before the corn, you they likely not receive a good production from the variety. So site selection, ensure that the area is not waterlogged. This is very important because this crop is a heavy feeder. You want to allow a good ear to water ratio so the plant can quickly pick up the nutrients. So avoid waterlogged areas. And if you have an area that is infested with vegetation or covered with vegetation, you want to use several of our herbicides. So you can choose from contacts, which could be your scorcher or your paraquat super. And these will deliver quick control of your weeds. So if you want the tractor operator to come in between zero to three days, you can use your paraquat, spray down the area, and by the third day, the tractor operator will be able to plow, plow or start to prepare that land. And the systemic options would be your glyphos AG41, or your glyphos max. And these are, these are solutions that will basically control the entire plant. So we're talking about into the leaf system, travels down the stem and to your routing, give you a complete control. And you usually see control within seven days if you use the product at the right pH or you condition the water at the right pH. All right, the next thing you need to check on, whether the land was previously cultivated by which crops. So if you had crops that would basically feed heavily on that year before cultivating your corn, you may have to introduce basically using manure that have been broken down to kind of build the soil fertility. And also crops that may share the same pests may pose a problem to the corn. So whatever crop that was there that would share the same pests as corn may cause those pests to basically infect the corn that you're gonna cultivate in the year. Also, the next thing to carry out the full process and the full process of preparation is from plowing your arrow and bed formation. Generally for heavy clay lands, I'd say, ensure that you do proper plowing before you go into the arrow process which to give you uh, freer soil particles to allow for good rooting of the variety. But for lands that are sandy, of a sandy base, you may not have to do your plowing in order to get that fine tillage. But for heavy clay soils, definitely do plowing. All right. So this, these pictures basically give you an idea of how the land should look. 
uh, before you plant. So for persons who are going furrow irrigation, where you basically allow water to run through the furrows and, and soak the beds, you want to prepare your land where the beds are not too high in order to get even and proper wetting. So you want to allow that water to come in contact with the root zone of the plant. So for furrow irrigation, we generally recommend that the beds are not too high and allow for even wetting. Right? But for drip irrigation, you have the uh, several systems. On a, on a, in an area that is heavily clay, they tend to make the beds higher to allow for proper drainage. For a heavy sanded soil, you want to make the beds lower. Or for some persons, they generally uh, till the area where they're going to plant the corn. Because it's a loose soil, you don't need heavy tillage to get that quick rooting. All right. All right, so let's go into the meat of the matter now. So we're go so we purchase us purchase our corn seed. Now we want to decide to plant. All right. One of the first thing you have to do if you're going to do direct planting is your seed treatment. And what we have at Agchem, we offer the diazinon, which is an insect a contact insecticide that can basically you can soak your seeds and this you can soak until swollen. With diazinon, diazinon, about one teaspoon per gallon or five ml per gallon, right? And along with the diazinon, you want to use your Miller ZMC Express. And what the ZMC Express will do is encourage faster germination of your corn seed with the zinc content that allows corn to germinate much faster. And, and with the combination, you're getting control from your soil borne insects. So if you have issues with ants, uh, grubs, mole crickets, a range of soil-borne insects that would affect your seed when you're planting. This treatment will, allow, will prevent that. And the other option is using the ZMC Express with your coverall. And what you can do, you can miss the seed with the ZMC Express at about 15 gram per gallon. And then you dust with your carbaryl powder, which is an insecticide. So we always recommend that you wear your safety gears when you're going to carry out this procedure. So with that combination as well, that will stimulate faster germination and also protect your seeds against those soil borne pests that will affect them. All right. So definitely, if you're going to do it direct seeding, I suggest that you treat your seeds. All right. And what we have at Akim, we carry uh, our Jacto doser. So if you're going to do treating of seeds or your drench application, I recommend that you purchase a Jacto doser that will give you timely or correct dosage in any drench application. So as I mentioned, drench, you have to treat your soil, whether you're going to do direct seeding or you're going to do transplant. And products that we recommend are our diazin and again, and you can apply this product if you're going to do direct drench from a spray pan at 30 ml per gallon, or that is equivalent to two tablespoons per gallon. And for the car trucks, you can use it at 10 ml or two teaspoons per gallon. So you add the recommended rate to your water and drench over the soil surface. Or if you had created planting holes, you can drench the planting holes before planting your seeds. All right. All right. And this will help, as, as I mentioned before, control all of those soil borne insects that would definitely pose a problem to your young plants coming up. All right. Or if you have a more sophisticated system, you can allow or send your insecticides through your drip system. And you can use the diazinon at two liters. You can apply that in 20 gallons of water and fertigate that onto the acre. Or you can use the car trucks at one liter per gallon, in one liter in 20 gallons and fertigate that onto the land. And this will give you a good coverage of uh, any insect problem that may trouble you, all right? And to get a better control, we suggest that you add new flame P and you can add that at 10 ml per gallon. And this will allow your, your product to basically bind to your soil particles to get effective control throughout the period. All right. So after we treat our soils, let's determine our planting distance. So 
several things to consider. Well, many farmers out there asking the question, John, which option is better, direct seeding or a seed tray? I tell them you can go both ways, but you have to basically understand the pros and the cons for both ways. All right, so first of all, direct seeding. What you want to do, because these varieties are hybrids, they, are, they need a adequate nutrient. You don't want to allow them to compete with each other. So what that means is that when you're plant doing direct seeding, you will put one seed per hole to ensure that you get a good yield out of your corn. But if you decide to, go, to plant two seeds, what they can do, what is recommended is that you thin out the second one when they're about four inches tall, right? So that they don't compete with each other, right? And generally what you want to do is plant at a depth of two centimeters. This will allow for a uh, quick rooting and quick emergence of the plant, right? And some of the benefits of direct seeding, it's not labor intensive, uh, you cost you less, and you can get quicker growth out of your plant in a, in a shorter time, right? The next method is doing your seed trees or planting in seed trees, all right? This method is sometimes considered better for some farmers, reason being is that they are able to do longer land preparation compared to direct seeding. So while the, the seed is emerging and growing, they can do their final land preparation and show either chemical or mechanical methods. Right? And usually what they can do, you can use your 128 or 200 cell trays and Agchem offers our TH germinating mix that you can use to set your seed, right? And with most corn varieties, 10 days after setting the seeds, they would be ready for transplant. If you keep them too long, you have the seeds, this or the plants propping out of the medium because the roots have begun to anchor quickly, right? And uh, the pros, the pro for this is that you can do longer control you can basically control your plant stand and also you can basically have even growth within the period recommended but here's a drawback the process costs more because you have to find seed trees you have to find a germinating mix you have to have a here area to grow those seedlings and basically you will still have to transplant them. So that's added expense on the farmer. Mm -hmm. Or for direct seeding, I should mention that generally what you do, you can set a couple of trees. So if there is a missing plant, you can put that plant in the area. Yeah, so that's for direct seeding. You can set a couple of trees in, case, in the event you lose a couple of your plants. All right, so we have an understanding of treating our seeds, treating our soils, but let's go into the planting distance and density required for sweet corn production. All right, so the first of all, you should ensure that the plants are spaced one foot apart, right, along the bed, and then beside each other, they're, they're spaced a foot and a half, right? This will give you adequate growth and, and provide you with a good planting density. And generally, the beds are spaced about four and a half or five feet apart. And with this planting distance, you'll have about 14,000 to 18,000 plants per acre, all right? So this, this will be, be very ideal. Either you're going uh, for irrigation or drip irrigation. If you follow those recommendations, you will reach your optimum planting distance, about 14 to 18,000 plants per acre. All right, so we covered our planting distance. Let's focus now on the nutritional aspect of the crop. At Agkin, what we try to do is offer the farmer a range of solutions. So of late, we have brought out our Abadam granular fertilizers, and these are some of the superior granular fertilizers on the market. Reason being, we have them in quick release, slow release, and the percentage of filler is very low. If, if none at all, right? So these are very effective granular fertilizers that they can use, all right? So when you're doing your, when you have established your planting beds, what generally persons have done is that 
you can apply about 50 grams every two meters on your bed before you do your direct seeding or your transplant. So before you have, you have basically put in any plants on the ear, you can apply 50 gram of fertilizer every two meters on that bed. And then after that, you can plant your crop. If your land is low on vegetation or organic content, you can also add about three kg of manure that have been broken down with that fertilizer mixture before direct seeding or transplant. And with our abdomen fertilizer, we suggest that at the 14 day period, 14 day after transplant or after direct seeding, you can come with your, with five grams of your Abadam, Abadam 142814 and 2.5 gram of your, of your Abadam sulfate of ammonia. And what that five gram would, would equate to, if you're calculating for an acre, that five gram would work out to about 200, 200 pounds of fertilizers for the acre, right? So 200 pounds of 142814 with about 100 pounds of sulfate of ammonia. Exactly, right? And then at the 28 day period, you'd come with about you come with your Abodam 1122 at the same five gram per plant. And then again, you come with your Abodam sulfate of ammonia. So this will ensure that the plant has adequate nitrogen for quick growth and also a balanced nutrition for healthy root system, healthy shoot growth, and healthy foliage development. So the key thing with uh, sweet corn or corn production is that. This, fer this, this crop is very time sensitive. You don't want the period of fertilization to lapse. So if you basically delay in your fertilization program, the corn will show it. So it's not a crop you can cheat. It is not like Kalalu where you can come a couple of days after and green up the leaf. No, once you have passed that stage of applying your fertilizer, the corn will show it in the end result. We're getting smaller carbs, uh, poor grain filling, and basically inadequate size. So do timely application in your fertilizer. And the last process with Abadam granular is your Abadam 15-5-35. And you use that at five gram per plant. And as I said before, that five gram per plant would equate to about 200, pound, 200 pounds of fertilizer, All right? And if you follow this process, you will guarantee that your yield should increase dramatically compared to what you have done before if you're an experienced farmer and and I've, as i've said we have options so what we have done is to carry our next line of granular fertilizers which is your elixir compound fertilizers and in this line we have our 162767 16, which would be a good starter solution for you and generally we we'll combine this with our amosulfan and these fertilizers are very soluble. And as suggested, they're compounds. So what that means is that in each grain that you pick up, you are getting that same ratio of fertilizer in the mixture, right? So you're delivering each grain, or you're delivering uh, adequate nutrients to the plant with the application of your fertilizer, right? And with this, same, same as the Abadam, five gram of the 16, 27, seven, and then 2.5 gram of your amosulfan, right? And that's at 14 days. At 28 days now, you're using five gram of your 15, 15, 15, and that is packed with your sulfur. So the sulfur will help you to, or help the plant to uptake your nitrogen and your other nutrients very quickly, right? And it will condition the soil for you. And then you would add that with your, your amosulfan as well. And these measurements, as I said before, will equate to 200 pounds of 15, 15, 15, and 100 pounds of your amosulfan. And the final application of your granular will be your 7, 20, 30. And this comes with 3% sulfur, which even allows at that later stage of development, allows the plant to pick, pick up the nutrients adequately, right? And as I said, elixir is a compound line of fertilizer. So it, each grain, you will have the required nutrients for the plant. So you don't have to worry about the ratio that you're picking up in, the, in your hand or about to apply. It's each grain would have that balanced ratio. All right. And with, so after we have applied our granular, we have the option of going 
full year as well. But as I said, at that game, we're well equipped with a range of solutions for the farmers. So if you want to go full year, we have the full year option off. In week one, the omics buy up into the fortifying. And I should know before I continue. Now, when you're using a high phosphorus fertilizer, uh, be mindful of your oil-based chemicals because anything that is oil-based will react with that high phosphorus fertilizer and may cause scorching on your plant. So be careful of that. Week, week two, you come with your, your Calmax B, which will encourage even greater root development. With that calcium needed at the root tip, the Calmax B will supply that to the plant very quickly and encourage that quick anchorage of the plant which you come again week three with your omics bio 2045, greater foliage, greater root development, greater stem girt, uh, protecting against any fungal problems, right? And then you, you transition into your Miller ZMC Express. And zinc is a very important part of your corn development. So you don't want the plant to start to, start to show zinc development, which is a bit late. So what you want to do is to apply that Miller ZMC Express. And as suggested, within 15 minutes of applying, the ZMC Express will start to work in that corn. In week five now, you come again, Omics Bio 20 Calmax B. As I say, you still want to push that big leaf growth. Still want to supply the calcium because the plant will need calcium. With that extended leaf growth, you want to supplement the leaf with all the calcium it requires, right? So that it doesn't rob the cob of the needed calcium to develop, all right? So you come in with there. At week six, Foliar boron is the option for you. For the boron content, this is basically allowing for uh, good pollination of your silks, right? And also the boron will help you start mobilize sugars. So when the cob is about to come out, you have the adequate uh, sugars for the quick development and quick size of the cobs. And then again, I touch it off about week seven with your omix calmix B. Just finalize and supplement all the calcium required for the crop growth, right? So that's it for the omics and miller biostimulants. We still have in store other, other foliar options. And these options are the agar leaf line of fertilizers, newly introduced, but very effective. So if you're, if you're, if you're not able to access your omics and miller, you can try your agar leaf line. So we start off with our root max, 10-50-10, as it suggests, quick root development, followed by your uh, green max, your 30 10, 10 quick foliage, quick leaf growth, greener plants, and you continue that with your week three. All right. And then into week four, you want to transition into your Nutrimax 2020. You're balancing off the nutrient requirement of the plant. Right. And this will, and these foliars are packed with your micronutrients. So you won't have to worry about the micronutrient deficiency. And with the Nutrimax, we carry that to week five, where we, are, we taper off at week six with her agar leaf flower max. And I know, yes, a lot of farmers will say flower max. Yes, this is a new one that we brought in for you just to basically supplement your needs. So this 91836 is a good complement to your, your corn plant, right? Quick, quick uh, flower set, pollen, nice formation, supplement all what is needed at this stage. And this, you can continue into your week seven and your week eight developmental stage, right? So these, those are the four options that we provide at Agchem. But I know farmers are going to ask me, so, Jana, you mentioned granular, and you mentioned your soluble foliars. What about if I'm not using granular or if I'm not using foliar? Well, farmers, well, we have it at Agchem. We have a soluble option that can be run through your drip. So if you have drip system and you're not able to apply your granola, we have the soluble nutrient program for you. So this line is the Agasol line. And some may have known, known it before, but what we'll do is to extend the line. So we have right now at week one, week one to two, we we'll use our 15, 30, 15. And this, and this soluble is packed with magnesium and trace elements. So if you are one of those farmers that are new to the business and you don't want to mix any straight blend, you can draw for your Agasol 15, 30, 15. Micronutrients, magnesium, everything. Quick uptake on nutrients. And what I usually recommend for a fertigation system, what you want to do is apply the 15, 30, 15 every other day. 
And as I suggest, you can name you can you can name your your first day any day of the week. So which day is comfortable? You can just line up your program based on what I have. So we'll start off day one, 15 30, 15, day three again, day five, and we'll continue in rotation. And what you want to do is to add at your fourth, fourth day of the week, you want to come in with, with your calcium nitrate. And that will basically supplement any calcium the plant is needed. And I've said in subsequent training that the leaf takes the most calcium. So what you want to do is to feed the leaf with the calcium so it doesn't rub the, the fruit in or the calcium. So we'll start from early because it's a, it's a plant that basically anchors quickly. We'll supplement with our calcium nitrate. Into week three and four now, we'll go for Agasol 2020. And as with the 15 30 15, the 20 20 20 has micronutrients as well. So you don't have to worry about your plants being short on any micronutrients. And similar to the 15 30 15, you do it every other day and you come in again on the fourth day with your calcium nitrate. So the program is very simple. It's going to give you adequate nutrients in a timely manner. So week three and four, your Agasol 20 20 20. <clears throat> Into week five now, you want to transition to your Agasol, Agasol 9, 18, 36. And this is packed with magnesium and trace elements along with your macronutrients, right? So at this stage, when the plant is going to basically take up most of the nutrients, you want to come in with your 9, 18, 36. And the program is as similar to those mentioned above. Every other day, on the fourth day, come in with your calcium nitrate, right? And from seven to eight, we're looking at our Agasol 10, 50, 40. High potassium solution for you with trace elements. So this will increase your size, increase uh, quick development for you, right? So these are some of the soluble options you can use. All right, so apart from nutrition, let's just mention the pest and disease. And one of the major pests you have is your cornea worm, right? Uh, major pest being that this, this pest will generally uh, overwinter or feed on your plant in the hot summer months. So if, if you are growing corn, you may have experienced this, the corn earworm, which tends to settle or feed in the cob or it suggested the ear of the corn, right? And generally you will have about, at maturity, you'll see one, one larva. But in the earlier stage, there could be several of them feeding. But as the larvae mature, they would basically cannibalize each other. And generally, you see one. Yeah, that is a major pest. Followed by aphids, your corn leaf upper, and etc. So these are some of the pests you need to watch out for. Also, your common rust. A lot of varieties suffer for your, from your common rust. So as suggested, the name suggested, you see small lesions looking rust-like that will basically affect your foliage. So if your foliage is damaged, the plant can't photosynthesize or develop as though you'd want it. Other fungal problems is your northern and southern blight, but your southern blight will be more common locally. But these are small lesions that will basically turn from a yellow to a tan look, right? And with, with most fungal problems, it will take over your foliage and this poor production, right? They're trying to avoid these problems. Also, you don't mildew and other problems, but those are some of the main ones. But let's go into the solution. So that's what everybody's here for. So in terms of your insect problem, uh, for, for your aphids and leaf upper, we have the caprid, so along with we have our cabaril, which will give you a wide control of your worms, your aphids, leaf upper. Also, we have the big bad indicarp, effective against your corn earworm, right? Followed by a cure, abomectin as active, and this is stomach action and contact. And some persons call it slight systemic, right? So that will give you a control of your corn earworm. Also, we have a caratrax, lambda cellatrin, which is a broad spectrum. And to note, uh, these products are basically, these uh, caratrax has a pre harvest of 21 days. so. Note that when you're applying late in this crop stage. And other solutions, like your Mimic, which is a stomach action, and this is a molting hormone. So unlike your other products listed, 
this is a molten hormone that will cause the larvae to uh, to believe that it's entering the molten state. So, it, so after three days, it will stop feed, and by the fifth day, you will have death of the larva. Right? So, it's an effective one you can add to your program. All right. So, fungicides. So, if you're having issues with rust or you want to prevent rust, we have several options. So, you have your regnum, which is a paraclosterin based fungicide, very effective against rust. Right? Followed by a topsin, which is a systemic option good in curative control, which controls the rust, the northern blight, the southern blight, etc. And bellis, paracostamine boscolid, a systemic option with effective against your rust control. But those are some of the fungicides that you can use in controlling your fungal problems with the sweet corn. All right. So there I go. I've mentioned some of the problems and some of the solutions that you can use. And what we try to do, because we have, we're offering a production guide, we want to also offer a variety that they can try. And we have our bright gene number two. And this is a nice sweet corn, right? Uh, with, with average of about one to two ears per plant. And as you can see in that picture, this was actually a live photograph taken of the, the variety grown beside another variety. And see that distinct green color? So it has a very robust foliage that, that is very heat tolerant, right? And the, the green filling, very excellent, about 12 to 14 rows, right? So very excellent green filling, right? And this variety matures within about 65 to 75 days. So it's a quick maturing variety that you can, you can time your production period to get the desired yield. So what we did was to try, try an early, plot of the variety in St. Catherine, and the uh, farmer, farmer received this, about 4,600 seeds, right? And they were set on January the 19th and transplanted on January the 30th. And, and this variety matured within 10 weeks, right? All right. So those are some of the early information that we had garnered in the plot. And this was it. So we realized that the, the plants were producing an average of two cobs, where each cob was measuring an average of about 16 to 17 centimeters with a nice color, a nice development. And what we actually observed, so the farmer, after, after basically planting about 4,600 seeds, the farmer thought that she would have only see, seeing about 4,200 plants, which basically saw the 4,600. So it was good germination. She got a basically 100% germination. And she expected about 5,050 cubs, which she ended up receiving 6,312 cubs, right? And this would be about 25% greater than the expected volume, right? So four to so, so receiving 6,312 cubs was very excellent for her. And here, the comment from the farm was that great germination, crop came in on time, and the production was good, more than expected. So this is a very high-yielding variety with good germination, giving greater cub sets. So we see farmers who have planted after this farmer getting about two to three cubs per plant, depending on, on the nutrition program, right? And these, this variety, although not giving a one large corn, you get the numerous medium-sized corn that would be good for the market, nice and sweet, and basically would, would fetch you a greater price. So you're getting a greater volume, you can get a greater price for your field. And to kind of break down the production numbers for you, if you, if you want to understand what you are expected to spend during the crop cycle, here we did a cost-benefit analysis where after taking out your land preparation, the cost of your seed, your irrigation, your pesticides, your labor, etc., you're looking at a total expense of 236000 And bear in mind, we didn't calculate the cost of setting up irrigation, right? But you're looking at a total expense of 236000 And based on the data that was provided with the farmer, where she harvested uh, 6,312 cubs, we basically put that in the calculator. And what I realized that if you had planted an acre, you'd receive 2,104 dozen. 
And if you calculate that, calculate that at the lowest price, you're looking at about $2.1 million. And taking away my expense, I'm looking at about $1.8 million, which is very great for a crop that comes in 10 weeks. So this is a good option to choose. So if you're looking for an excellent sweet corn variety, I suggest that you choose the bright gene, right? You're getting the good crop, good development in a short period. And for any for further information, you can call any other agronomist. You have Dale Smith in the Northwest region, right? You have Dennis Leckley in the Northeast region, yours truly in the Southeast region and in the Central area, you have Dean Parker. And in the West again, you have uh, Sion Spence, right? So for any further information, you can call any other agronomist or the technical sales agronomist for any further information. Jamar, there's a question on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Can you give a breakdown on how to use the pesticide to control corn hair worm? All right. It will depend on several factors. Uh, the time of year that you're basically cultivating the corn and, uh, and yeah, the time of year would be the main factor. So if the pest pressure is higher, what you want to do is basically uh, rotate your product. So we're talking about, you have your cap rid, which will be used to control the moths. So if you see the moths coming in, you come in with your cap rid, which will control those. Three days after, usually these, the carnier worm or the, or the adult lay within, lay and the eggs actually in three to four days. So what you want to do is time that. So when you know that the larvae is gonna come out after three to four days, you can come with your Indicarb or your Mimic, right? So you can space your pre-application about uh, five to seven days interval. So it's just a timing and scouting in your field to know when you have adults coming in and when you have the larvae. So there is not a hard and fast rule how to apply the products. It's based on the, what you're seeing at the time. Okay. Um, another question on YouTube. What is the spacing on the beds? For the corn. All right, so along the bed, it's one foot spacing, and basically, spacing between plants is one and a half. So along the bed, one foot spacing, and then between plants or across is one and a half, right? Okay, can you remind us of the crop life for the no new sweet corn? The no new, all right, the crop life is about 10 weeks. And it range depending on your nutrition or the era, you can have the, the corn coming in about nine and a half weeks. So nine and a half to 10 weeks. Okay. And the last question is, um, what are the recommended granulars that you had mentioned again? Can you remind me? All right. So granular solutions are, or Abadam. And in Abadam line, we have the 14, 14, 11, 22, 15, 5, 35. And, uh, the sulfate of ammonia. In our elixir line, we have our, our 16, uh, 27, 7, and sulfur and then the other. Region. So both um, Abodam and the elixir line. Um, Stevie right. Henry again is asking, what genetic type is the bright gene number two corn? Genetic type? Uh, basically, uh, to answer your question, it's a hybrid, hybrid out of Taiwan. Sweet corn is a medium, medium sized sweet corn. And as I suggested, highly prolific. So we're looking at about one to two years per plant with an average of one and a half uh, years. There's right. a question. I can, I'll ask a question. So anybody want to win a prize? I'll ask a question. All right, we'll go ahead. Can you suggest, you ready out here? All right. Can you suggest the variety or no, let me go again, sorry. Can you tell me the time it takes for the bright gene to mature, the bright gene number two to mature? Make it that easy one. So the first person to answer will get the prize. Um, Leroy Wilson said eight weeks. 
Now come again, Leroy. Steve Henry, 65 to 75 days. 65 to 75 days, yeah, that's the answer. I'm going to ask Steve to send in um, a contact number. They can send a number to 876-564-7726, and we will give you a call as to how you can get your gift. All right. And viewers, thanks for joining us again. Another ad came live. I hope this training basically answered most of your questions. And for further information, you can call any of the agronomists, right? So you can call me or any other four agronomists for any further information, or you can call Agchem at 757-0022, right? Or you can visit the office at 2 East Ashenheim Road, all right? And thanks again.